Hi, Chief. Hi, Chief. Okay, we're ready on on YouTube, Mayor. So I can call the roll. Yes, sir. <clears throat> call the roll. Mayor Bain. I'm here. Vice Mayor Loeb. Here. Councilman Best. Present. Councilman Mitchell. Here. Councilman Petralanda. Here. Okay, we're gonna uh, go ahead and uh, have invocation by uh, Councilwoman Mitchell. Heavenly Father, we ask your guidance as we emerge from a pandemic. We ask that you bestow wisdom and compassion upon us as we combine our efforts for the betterment of our beloved city and its residents. We are reminded that while we may not agree on all issues, everyone participating or listening tonight shares in the common calling of caring for our community. For these and all of our blessings, we are eternally grateful. Amen. Okay, we're going to say the pledge. I, well, wait. Pledge allegiance. Wait, let the flag come. Is the flag going to come up or no? Yes. Okay. There you go. You okay, I pledge, pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag. The flag. Of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic, Republic for which, which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Okay, but we go to uh, first, first and foremost, uh, five open forum. This is anybody wish to speak. If there is anyone that's wanting to speak during public comment, please dial 305-805-5151. Input the meeting ID, which is 863-9512-4146. Followed by the pound sign, there is no participant ID. Press pound again. If you're calling by phone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. I'll be right back. Erica, just a real quick question. Sure. Um, I know I received an email and, and I, you were on the, you were CC'd on that uh, titled public comment. That's something that you would read or? No, I just forwarded along to council right. that these are the comments that are, that are received okay. before hey. the meeting. Okay. 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 That's, just, that, that's just for us, George, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I got a meeting too. I'll call you after the meeting, okay? Okay, bye. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anybody? Nobody, sir. Okay, we're gonna close the public hearing and we're gonna go ahead and continue. We're gonna to go to uh, approval of the council minutes, 6A, June 8th, 2020 regular meeting and uh, 6B, June 10th, 2020 special meeting. I entertain a motion. Through the chair, motion to move, sir. Second. I'd like Hold a discussion, on. Mayor. Go ahead. On the second for the June 10th meeting, I'd like to request that the record reflect that the special meeting was called after the um, uh, the company, the vendor, agreed to change the contract. Um, I, I I wasn't at the June 10th meeting, so I don't think I can vote on it. No. I think it's important to reflect that we don't just count call uh, special meetings just because we don't like the way the vote came out, that this was a significant change in that the vendor agreed to change the, the terms of the contract for the fireworks. Oh, okay. I can, I can make that change. I can add that. Okay. So I got a first and second. I'm good with my motion, sir. Call the vote. Vice Mayor. Oh, sorry. Councilman Best. Aye. Councilman Mitchell. Yes. Councilman Petralanda? Yes. Mayor Bain? Yes. Okay, we go on to consent agenda. Mr. Is Mayor? Anyone... Hi. Yes. Uh, I, I believe Vice Mayor Lowe was in I attendance at the June so. 10th yeah. meeting. It was the June I... 8th meeting the 8th. where you were appointed. So okay. it's okay to go ahead and add okay. your vote. So... Okay, so <laughs> Vice Mayor Lowe, okay, thank you. All right, we're going to go to consent agenda. Anybody have anything to pull off the agenda? If not, I don't. Read them. okay. We, Tammy, you want to go ahead and read them off, please? Yes, sir. Uh, 9A, this is a recommendation by recreation that council approve an expenditure on an as needed basis in the amount of $15,890.76 to Supreme Chemical, the lowest responsible quote after obtaining three written quotes, which were attached for pool chemicals as funds were budgeted in the fiscal year 1920. 9B, recommendation by the elderly services department that council approve an expenditure in amount not to exceed $26,423.98 to Fitness Solutions Inc. via waiver of the competitive bid process after obtaining three written quotes which are attached for fitness equipment for the new senior center as funds were budgeted in the fiscal year 1920 senior center construction budget. I'd like to pull, Mayor, I'd like to pull item B for discussion. All right, let's vote on item A, please. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Call the vote. Vice Mayor Lowe. Aye. Councilman Beth. Aye. Councilwoman <clears throat> Mitchell. Yes. Councilman Petralanda. Yes. Mayor Bain. Yes. Go ahead, my councilwoman. Okay. Uh, for item B, I, I just have some um, a few questions that I'd like to ask of, I guess, Omar or William. Um, one of them is with the equipment. Have we um, made really, really sure that the equipment that we're ordering is going to fit into the size of the room? Because Obviously, we've had issues with the rec center and, and having uh, way more equipment and, and it doesn't fit the, the dimensions can, of the room. I can respond to that. So, yes, we did work with BNA as well as, as uh, Lifespan um, Design Studio. And we did, um, those are the number of equipment pieces that were recommended for that area. Okay. And allowing. Tammy and that's taking into account that we're talking about our residents in the senior center who need a little more space. They yes. you know, may not be able to maneuver in between equipment. Wheelchair access, walker access. They will, they will yes. be ADA compliant also. Okay. The other yes. question I have is, should the senior center not be ready um, in August, like we're anticipating, will the company and the company's ready to deliver the equipment, will they hold the equipment without charge for us until it's ready to be installed? I, that's a question I can ask. However, typically when we do the ribbon cutting, usually when we do the ribbon cutting, that's where it's a turnkey operation pretty much. We don't necessarily have to open up the fitness center. 
um, it can be remain closed, but um, however, we will, uh, it should be ready and available to the seniors when, okay. when we do decide to open. Not necessarily will we be even be open for the facility even when the senior center is, is completed. What I'm, asking, on the order. Though, what I'm asking is to make sure, because I know when I was with the county, there were often times when we bought an item and then we could not accept them on time because of some, it wasn't ready. You know, even though our expectations were that, so uh, we had to actually pay the company to store something because they were ready to deliver it. So no, I want to make sure that should we not be that is the responsibility of Stonehenge to to right. store it until the time that it can be okay. placed into the. I just room. don't want to incur any cost for storage if we're not ready to accept the equipment. No. No. Absolutely, it's, it's really Stonehenge's responsibility to accept uh, the delivery of the merchandise and store it until it's ready, and they're responsible for. Um, setting it up, working with the vendor to set it up. All right, those are my only questions, Mayor. Um, I'll need a motion for B. Motion Through the word. Second. Call a vote. Vice Mayor Lowe? Aye. Councilman Beth? Aye. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Petralanda? Yes. Mayor Bain? <coughs> yes. We go to 4th of July guidelines, 10A. Thank okay. you. Um, staff has met with police and parks and recreation director Omar Luna. I, uh, William, you're, William, I can't, you're not coming in very strong to me. I can't hear you too good. Yeah, me either, Bill. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Better. Okay. Staff has met with police and parks and rec director Omar Luna in order to establish some guidelines for the safe fireworks show on July 4th. The following is uh, what we're recommending. Number one. Spectators will be allowed as long as they maintain social distancing and wear a mask. No tents, barbecues, sporting equipment, picnic, or tailgating will be allowed. The area of the golf course on Curtis Parkway from Deer Run South to Eld Run Drive will be barricaded until 8 p.m. when public will be allowed to enter the area for the 9 p.m. show. Spectators may also park their vehicles on the swales along Curtis Parkway and Deer Run, as well as the median parking lot by the golf course beginning at 8 p.m. They can either watch from their vehicles or step outside their vehicles as long as social distancing is maintained. Staff will also barricade and rope off the area of the front nine and back nine along Deer Run and Curtis Parkways. This will allow us to control access to the golf course from the soil. These barricades will be moved back 12 feet at 8 p.m. to allow for patrons to park their cars and watch the fireworks. Staff and police will be on hand to ensure that all spectators enjoy a safe fireworks show. Residents are encouraged to watch from their homes if they can, and fireworks will also be shown on live speed, live feed, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Those are some of the plans that police and uh, public works are, have agreed to. We're going to have staff out there monitoring uh, the event. So we feel this is a, a good plan going forward to make sure everyone enjoys the fireworks show. Okay. Does Elmar have anything to add? Mm. Omar, you're muted. <laughs> No? Okay. All right. Thank you for that report. And uh, we're going to go on to 11A, a resolution. A, this is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Miami Springs, Florida, establishing rates for collection of garbage, trash, and recycling for residential and commercial customers, provided for implementation and provided for an effective date. In accordance with resolution 2009-3448, the administration requests approval of a 1.13% increase in sanitation recycling fees, which is the fiscal year 1920 increase assessed by the county for disposal and recycling fees. Uh, during the, uh, September 2019, the city received notice from Miami-Dade uh, Solid Waste Management, which is attachment A of your packet, that their disposal and recycling fees will both increase by 1.13% effective October 1st, 2019. Since the city includes the annual sanitation charges on the property tax bill, 
it was too late to make any changes of, for the tax bills that were mailed out in October 2019. We are hereby requesting, as we do every year, approval of a new fee, which will include will be included in the tax bills that will be mailed out in October 2020. The current annual sanitation recycling fee is $665.16. The new fee will be $672.72. This increase represents a 63 cent a month uh, increase to the single family uh, residential uh, customers. Multifamily uh, dwellings will go from the current 18.73 per unit to 18.94 per unit. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> I, I entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second it. Second. Any further discussion? Call the vote. Vice Mayor Lowe? Aye. Councilman Best? Aye. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Petralanda? Yes. Mayor Bain? Yes. We go to uh, discussion on honoring former Councilman Jim Cottle. Mayor Council, uh, staff request. Uh, discussion on a more permanent memorial for uh, former Councilman uh, Jim Cottle. As you know, Councilman Cottle spent many years of service to this community. He was involved in parks and recreation as well as our golf course. Attached to your packet is a listing of some of Councilman Cottle's service to Miami Springs. Some of the ideas uh, that have been come up with include a street naming, naming the gym inside the uh, community center, and naming some uh, section of the golf course. We also discussed naming uh, one of the three fields in the city, but we understand that all th of those fields are already named, uh, mainly Stafford Park, Prince Field, and PV Dove Park. I invited members of the Carter family to be here tonight. We have his wife, Judith, and his son, Chris, and Jim's grandson, Jacob, I think is also with us and have expressed an interest in addressing council to discuss some of the ideas they have for a permanent memorial for President <clears throat> Councilman uh, Jim Carter. Chris? There you go. Okay. Yep, thank you, Mike. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, loud and clear, Chris. Great, well, we certainly appreciate this opportunity to present uh, tonight, uh, especially the day after uh, Father's Day yesterday and um, first Father's Day for us um, uh, without uh, that around, so we're gonna we're we're gonna make a little light of this because we he did pass down the crying gene to all of us, <laughs> as you all know. So uh, hard for us to get past these types of things. But um, you know, I when we when my mom and I went to to talk to William, we wanted to have something um, kind of permanently named after after my dad here in the Springs, um, really more for future generations. Um, to be inspired to um, give back service and service to your community the way that he did. And, you know, there's so many things that uh, he's kind of had his hand in over the years. And um, it's hard to put our finger on one, one thing or another, but um, as that day when we went to um, present to William, we were waiting for him in the gymnasium and, Jacob, if you'll show this uh, mural, you know, the mural that's on the wall um, there in the gymnasium. As I was standing there waiting for it uh, to talk to William, that's fine, but um, that mural just kind of uh, spoke to me that these are all the things that my dad had done over the years uh, here in the Springs, starting with uh, moving here as a 12 year old boy and uh, in, in delivering milk to the Curtis Mansion in 1945 for the people who were living there at the time and uh, making a quarter a week all the way through uh, his career of service um, starting the parks and recreation department I, I won't go through that list I, I wrote that list and we, we, it was kind of impossible to cover everything but you know the original recreation department in 1955 when my dad started there was at the, at the library and uh, so that was when they originally built the first gym and uh, he was uh, under Art Peavy, the uh, athletic director, the first what they called athletic director or, or director of parks and recreation, what Omar holds today, um, and created a lot of the programs that are still in existence today. Um, and those are things that um, have over the years, we think and we believe, had a big reason why people live here. Uh, the, the, the ability to have such great sports programs, such great community programs 
for everyone um, is, I think, has only been emulated uh, in the rest of the rest of Miami over the years. And so to have his legacy uh, shown every day um, and with with these types of programs and then laying out, you know, Prince Field across the street. At that point, there, there was no ball fields. Uh, and so he had the idea he was attending University of Miami and this was his first job. Uh, and so he and another gentleman laid out the field uh, across the street there, the baseball fields and how it exists today. And then my mom and he actually laid out PB field um, right across the street from the, from the, uh, rec uh, from the high school. And so starting there and then starting to create all those programs over the years um, was just something that has been a lasting thing. And I, again, I, you know, it's so many things to, 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 to attribute to that, you know, it's unfortunate once someone's gone that you start to remember these things, <laughs> right? But um, we all know it. And I think um, whether he was serving and working in the community, you know, he left to go to Dade County Parks and Recreation and spent 40 years there doing a lot of different things in all the different parks across the, the whole South Florida area. But even at that point, he was always a coach here. He was always leading the team. He was always part of the recreation board. He was always active in doing things. And a lot of the, po <coughs> the folks that are there now, you know, the older generation now are the ones that were his players. So people like Doug or who, who uh, you know, gave his time to Mayor Bain and all these folks who were, who were around, you know, uh, were always part, it was just part of this, this uh, inspirational thing. So, you know, then he, then he retires and, and becomes a councilman for, for two terms and, you know, gives back civically and then comes back later on after uh, retiring to, to help oversee the golf course and get that under our control as Miami Springs residents from the city and uh, and then had, you know, a hand in, in helping uh, as of late. The last thing he did was, you know, help find Paul O'Dell. And so, you know, <laughs> it was his first job and his last job. And we just think that's a beautiful thing. And we just want, uh, again, for future generations to know that name. And, and when they ask who is, uh, who, is this, who is Jim Cottle, we want to be able to tell the story. So, you know, we have a lot of different things. I'd like my mom to say a few words and, uh, if she can. It's always hard. It's still fresh for us. It's only been a couple months. So for me as well, I know that I'm looking at the council now, and I think you all knew Jim, whether it was on the field, on the athletic field, the golf course, Maria knew him on Curtis Parkway. But he always, he always his heart was always with Miami Springs. No matter where we traveled, conversations with strangers, he would always end up with the family, the grandkids in Miami Springs. What a beautiful place Miami Springs was to raise your family and to live, to be a part of. Um, I really thank the council for considering this. I think it's it's so overwhelming for us because like Chris said, you never know until someone leaves us that we look back on the life and we think, my gosh, look what all he's done. If we had only known it sooner, which is, I think everybody goes through that. But I can tell you this, just with us being before you tonight, I know that Jim hears it. I know that he's overwhelmed by the family wanting to do this. And I only pray that God allows for happy tears because I know that's what's streaming down his face now. I thank all of you. Um, we consider all of you our neighbors and friends. And uh, I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, and just a couple of things. We were going to try to share the screen, but it's too complicated. Jacob, I just wanted to show a couple of things. You know, you all gave uh, Jim this plaque. Uh, I don't, I don't remember the exact timing, but it basically says thank you for 58 years of service to the city of Miami Springs. And um, so these types of recognitions are in existence today. Um, Jacob, go ahead and take that down. I, I did want to read. You know, when when we were we've got we've reached out to some people, and if 
if and when uh, some type of renaming thing happens or whatever, uh, you know, we all collectively agree that's right. We have several people that'll uh, chime in here, but one of the things that you all know, um, you, one of the quotes from, from Ted Hendricks, which was one of his players, and you all know Ted Hendricks is a Hall of Fame player. He said, Coach Caldwell taught us teamwork, concentration, determination, perseverance, the, the payoff of hard work and honed our skills to become better people. This is priceless in helping kids achieve their own personal best. So when you, when you have that effect on people, I think over time, um, it's, it's, uh, it deserves some type of recognition. Lastly, Jacob, we'll hold up. Um, Jim's granddaughter, Megan, um, drew this picture of, of uh, my dad um, here as of late. Most of you probably recognize him more that way with his hat on his glasses. Um, and that's going to be the, uh, that's going to be the, uh, that's the beginning of a foundation we're going to uh, create. We're in the process of creating called Coach Coddle Cares. And uh, the goal is to uh, take on different projects within the Springs to give back um, however we can through either the sporting teams to make donations, to sponsor things. Uh, we have a lot of good ideas, so we want to move that forward here in the future. So if and when some of this stuff starts to take place, we'll have a foundation by then and be able to help some uh, financially with some of the some of the things that uh, you know that we should be able to help with and give back to. So that's what we wanted to say tonight. We really just appreciate the time. Uh, we've been asked, uh, you know, we've kind of debated on what we would prefer. Um, as a family, we're just grateful. Um, my dad started at the rec center. That makes all the sense in the world, uh, the original one. He had so much to do with Prince Field, uh, and he had so much to do with the golf course. But, you know, really where he he did most of his time in coaching was at the rec, rec center in, the, in that complex there. So uh, that's where I think we remember him the most uh, and would love to have something like that there. Um, and of course, the, the corner, <laughs> the corner here between Ives and London is where everybody remembers him sitting in his front office here. So, you know, there's lots of different things to do, uh, but we would leave that up to you all, uh, depending on what you support. And we, we appreciate the time. Thanks, William. <clears throat> William, what kind of a list is there? Because I don't have that here on my. What's what kind of list? One of the basic things will be a street. I can't hear him. Can you hear me? Yep, barely. Not, not very good. Not very good. One, one, one of the things that we're considering is a street naming. Uh, the other thing we're, we're considering is uh, naming a uh, gymnasium inside the uh, community center after Jim Cardle. Um, uh, Paul O'Dell had also recommended maybe one of the new shelters that we're building at the golf course being named after, after Jim. Uh, but going back to what Chris is saying, his, um, his start was in Parks and Rec, and I think the family would uh, rather see something in uh, maybe in the gymnasium being named after Jim. Is that right, Chris? Yes. So... Yeah, we tried to do some research on, we, you know, I tried to, we obviously know who our PV was because he met too much. I hired my dad originally was the start of the Parks and Recreation Department. So PV field, we understand. We never could dig up any information on who, what Prince Field was and who was that was named after. So that was the only other thing that I was an idea that I'd come up with and trying to find out where that was. We don't want to offset someone else. And that's not, you know, that's not right either. So th that family would probably not be happy. I just don't know who that is or, what the contributions were there. So that's another option between the gym and really the, the Prince Field. Um, I, I have I have an idea uh, for at Prince Field. Why can't we make why can't we put a, a why can't we name the baseball diamonds after him and have a nice uh, sign or plaque at the backstop showing that the two two park named after him and in at the park named after him and people would see that every day when they go to the park. Yeah. And Mayor, I have also, a, uh, I, I'm leaning toward um, the gymnasium because his name is Jim, to kind of say <laughs> gymnasium and J-I-M. Uh, um, I think we, uh, I don't, I'm not really in favor of renaming things that have already I'm been. Not, 
because I'm not, I'm no, I know. I'm not, I know. Gonna, I'm I, not understand. Renaming. I understand okay. that you're not doing you that. Said that. I'm saying. not renaming anything. I understand that, I'm, Mayor. I was just yeah, saying I'm, that that you know that we had thought about. I mean, it had been brought up of places that are already named for someone, and and that they were named for someone because it was important. Um, at that time and, and in their memory. So um, I think finding a new idea, like you suggested, or the gymnasium itself, the gymnasium, J-I-M-nasium, um, I'm more in favor of that. We, I, uh, <laughs> to, the, to the chair, if I can uh, weigh in on this a little bit. I know Jim's favorite sport was baseball, so I know why the mayor said that. Um, I also know that he played for the University of Miami and he would, he would have been drafted had he not gone to Korea, probably professionally. Uh, Jimmy Fox, who's in the Hall of Fame, was Jim Cottle's coach. Uh, I think that would be appropriate. I, I, I think that rather than be rash about this, we, we should just uh, sit back and, and give it some thought as to how we would do it. Uh, not to disagree with Councilwoman Mitchell, there's nothing wrong with putting uh, some recognition uh, inside the, of the gym either. That's, that's fine. But uh, again, just to mention to the to the to my colleagues that baseball was his favorite sport. Anybody else? If I may, go ahead. Um, uh, Councilman Cottle uh, is is being recognized in the gymnasium on the on the wall of fame. fame uh, just to remind everybody, and that way, if if we would do the baseball diamond. Uh, it would have his name in multiple places uh, in the city. Well, we could, yeah, there's a, there's a few things, uh, Councilman Loeb, that we could consider here. Um, the, the facility, in other words, all the fields together are Prince Field, right? Uh, it doesn't, like the Rebecca Sosa Theater is a subset of the community center, right? Right, so that's why I, that's why right, I brought, exactly. that's why I brought up, the, I'm thinking yeah, of I, I'm thinking of Mr. Cottle, which I call Mr. Cottle all my life. I'm thinking about his his ideals about baseball. And that was always talked between my father, him, and us, baseball, baseball, baseball. And he was an avid sports fan. Yep. My, yeah, I, I think that, and I just thought of this right tonight about the the, uh, the diamonds. I just thought of it right tonight that it would bring, and in my mind, it would bring his name out into the open for everybody to see and we and we can make a beautiful design and a, and a and a very nice not i don't even looking at a plaque but a nice sign that would, would uh come commemorate his uh his uh memory where all these kids and everybody that would grow up could come in and see it which which being locked up in the gym i mean he's his he does we did not put him into the hall of the wall of fame and then but my other one is for the family my other one is is something they could see every day uh, right. is, is the street because that's where when you drove by, that's where you saw the whole Cottle family. I don't know if they're having a good time or arguing all the time, but that's where you had all the family <laughs> all the time. And it'd be something that they could see their, their, their uh, uh, grandfather, father, husband's name every day. Uh, and never are my two ideas. You know, we, what we ought to do too is do some research on on. on where the name Prince came from. That would be a thought. If this could well, if, if council wants, if council wants to uh, one of the front delay this a little bit and, and go and do a little more research, that's fine with me. I well, put I my feel, I put my yeah. proposal in, and that's yeah, how I, 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 I'd like to see it go in that in that direction too, with uh, with perhaps a little more research. And again, I don't think we need to be rash about this. I think in principle we all agree we're going to do something, and we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. So, Mayor, uh, may I may I say something? Sure. Uh, when I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing you folks talk about Jim. Uh, I read his uh, his resume, but I think of, when I think of Jim, I think of two things. Uh, first one is like the mayor said earlier, driving by Ludlum and seeing Jim and the whole family there. Mm -hmm. That 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 rings a bell to me. That's that's something I remember Jim uh, fondly with. The other one is is the golf course. Uh, the first, uh, when I first got elected, I've said this many times, uh, my first question, my first big issue at the time was a golf course. And he's the one I went to discuss about the golf course. So that's what I remember, Jim, about, uh, with, or, uh, is the golf course and Ludlum. So the, I, I'm leaning towards the, uh, street naming, uh, on Ludlum because that's what I remember Jim about so fondly. 
but uh, I don't have a problem doing a little research and maybe investigating a little bit more and uh, then making a decision. Uh, I think, uh, Councilman Petrolanda, I think you're going to have a problem with Ludlam. That's a county road, I believe, it's considered. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking about Ivis. Yes. Oh, our, my street? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I was, uh, that's what I was referring to. I, I drove right that'd, that'd be, that'd be fine with me, but I, that, that'd be fine with me, but that, 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 that kind of hides itself over in the northwest corner of town, and uh, the baseball diamonds are more centralized and a lot more. I am, I, I, I that works too. I, I, that's my mean, thoughts. My mean, thought. I, I, I mean, Coach Councilman Lowe mentioned his name is on the Wall of Fame in the gymnasium. It is. That, that was an honor he got to see while he was alive and his family. Yep. And, and you know, the, uh, I, I don't know. I think that the, I think we could do a nice memorial type uh, sign at the baseball park uh, at, at, in the, in the uh, backstops where people can see it. I, I mean, that's my thought. I, I, mean, I don't know. You guys. Yeah, something like the baseball, softball, Jim Cottle baseball, softball complex, and then still let the whole thing be called Prince or something. If if we ever find out what Prince was, <laughs> I believe my understanding is that Prince was named after uh, I believe the first Parks and Rec director for the city. Yeah, but that's not the point. The point I'm not renaming the park. It's just oh. like it's like putting it's like uh, giving him a name. Uh, let name the pro shop after him. Yeah, just, yeah, you know, you, you're naming a, a, a part of the complex after a, a person or something. That's, that's I'm not renaming what... the park. I want that out of there. You guys keep saying that. I'm not renaming the park. It's Prince Field. I'm re, I'm giving him I'm giving him the diamonds, the actual diamonds that are there. That's my thought. Or the, the other one, if uh, you know, Coddle Infield, whatever. I, I... Whatever, something I think, I, think and, I don't think we're going to arrive at anything constructive here tonight. I think for us to take this and, 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 and think about it, come back to something the, the next okay. time that we can make make a movement on it, Mayor. I agree with Councilman Best that they're all good ideas, and um, uh, let's think about it and have the sit staff look at what would be if there's any that would not be a possibility, then we can um, just consider the ones that can. So. I don't think there's a rush to decide tonight. All right, here's here's what I think that we could do then after tonight. We're going to delay it. That every, a, a, the council pe people give them their spot they think is a good idea. If there's four or five, whatever it is, put them on the list with the research from the from the management, and then we'll vote on one of the five. It sounds good. It's a good way of doing it. Okay. Sure. That's just, that's it. We're just very honored that and it's just it shows that there's, he has a hand in so many things that we even had a hard time with it. So we we appreciate you you all recognizing that it's, it's just wonderful. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, I would ask. I would ask. Chris, Chris I would and Judy, ask the Chris and Sorry. Judy and Jacob. Thanks. Thanks for coming in front of us tonight. And uh, we'll get something done that's good. That's good right. Jacob's our technical person. Yeah. Thank goodness we wouldn't have been on tonight without him because this is his setup. So I would ask. Uh, I, this, so, I would so ask once once we have the list that the family go over the list and maybe give us their their personal preference. Good right. Talk. We'll give it. We'll, we'll go. We'll go through. We're not going to do this until the first week in August. Oh, so okay. we have this time to get it ready. The family can go over our five proposals with the history of where it might be. And then the family can put their two cents in of what they feel is right. And in, in the first meeting in August, we'll vote on where we might put the uh, honorable Mr. Jim Cottle's name in my so we'll, so we'll feed these into the city clerk, correct? Yes, sir. Got it. Everybody okay? How about, All right. How about as far as the street naming? What? The street naming. Do you want to move ahead with that one? Yes. No. Yes. No, we just said we're going to oh, go ahead. It, it, yeah. The street naming, Ivers and Ludlam. No, we're going to go ahead and get five proposals, and that would be one of them. It could be something that uh, something could show up on the list that hasn't even been discussed tonight. That's why I think it's prudent for us to think about it further. All right. You yeah. understand, William? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. You got Thank it. Take you. care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can do it first the next time and we can shake your hand. Thank you. I'd rather have a kiss from you. 
Okay. <laughs> you got it, Billy. You got it. Right, thank you. Take care. All right, Billy. Thank you. Bye. 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 All right. All right. All right. We go to uh, 12A request from Mr. Uh, Councilman Petrolanga about the Fourth of July car show. We, we had originally uh, discussed uh, internally within staff about uh, not having the car show this year, but uh, uh, Councilman Petrolanga approached us and we talked to uh, uh, the fellow that runs the, uh, the car shows for us. Jumping and, Jack. Jumping yeah, Jack. Jumping Jack. And um, we told him about the, uh, the circle and what's going on there. He apparently was out there and uh, uh, he feels confident that he can make it work uh, with social distancing and masks and all that. So uh, Councilman Petrolanda brought up the uh, one of the discussion item about possibly uh, having it. This will be on Friday evening, July 3rd. You're going to you're gonna have to close the whole circle now based on what we got going on over there, right? Correct. Well, it, it should be, uh, they're uh, doing the final stages of paving over there now, so it should be done by then. Right, right. Mayor, the reason I brought this up is because I had a few calls from car, car guys that uh, said that uh, the, we're having fireworks and uh, we're going to follow the same guidelines and we should do it again. Now, this is a car show that I, I believe is uh, the longest car show in the state of Florida, 4th of July. Uh, car show in the, I believe, definitely in the county, but in the state of Florida. And it's something we've had every year. And I think, uh, I think uh, we should have it. Uh, Is there a cost to the city other than closing down the circle, the staff time for closing down the circle? It's the same cost as always. We have to wait. Fifteen hundred dollars. How much? Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen. Yes. It was, it was budgeted, budgeted, correct? It was budgeted, yes. It was a budget in the uh, in the council's budget. I'll make Don't a forget. motion to go ahead and have the car show. I think um, uh, if we can have a space, if we have a space for it, it is something that is outdoors. So um, okay. a reason to uh, to think that we shouldn't be able to maintain social distancing, which is the big concern. And I'll second that. I got a All second right, got from it. Vice Mayor Loeb. Okay, the first was from Councilwoman Mitchell. And the second was Vice Mayor Lowe. Yep. Lowe. Lowe. <laughs> Call a vote, please. Vice Mayor Lowe. Aye. Councilman Best. Aye. Councilman Mitchell. Yes. Councilman Petrolanda. Yes. Mayor Bain. Yes. Thank you. Got you. It. you got Hi, Jamie. It. Thank you. All right. We got a 12B. It's a request by Mayor Bain uh, to discuss the official city uh, social media and web page. I bring this up again. I was hoping to have this meeting in person, but we're, we're not gonna be able to do that. I was bringing this up again because of the calls that I've gotten, many calls of what we can do about that, the, the, uh, the miamisprings.com site. People keep continuing to believe that the city has any, uh, any uh, role in that site, and we do not. And uh, because of some of the things that have happened with the, uh, the situation with the Black Lives Matter and the, the, the police and everything, uh, people seem to be uh, very, very hostile on that site. And uh, I wanted to make sure and make it clear. Of course, this doesn't mean anything because I don't know how many people are going to see, see this meeting or how many people, how that much of this gets out. But uh, I had to bring it up for like a public uh, information situation that we're miamisprings.gov, our, our web pages and different, it uh, goes that way, Twitter and everything. But the miamisprings.gov uh, is, does, it does have not.gov.com, has nothing to do with us. And frankly, because of the powers of free speech and the First Amendment, we have nothing to do uh, to help get rid of it or fix it or monitor it somehow. We can only ask for the owner of the site to have maybe a little bit of better judgment on what is posted there and what is not posted because some of the things that are, are, are very, uh, to people that are good people that are getting ramrodded on that site for no apparent reason, but just to be, 
belittled and, and to have be defamed. And uh, I would hope that somehow his conscience might consider to think about what he allows to be put on that site and what he doesn't. So this is what I brought it up for. It's a it's the pub it's for you know public information mm -hmm. so people can know and maybe I reach out to the person that runs that uh, to reconsider some of the things because they take things off the of of uh, Facebook they take things off that are detrimental to that defame people off of uh, Twitter and all these things I think he can uh, do a little bit of monitoring of that blog so that good people's names aren't thrown in the dirt into the gutter and. Uh, uh that's that's my thought, and that's why I brought it up. Okay, Mayor, I'd like to I'd like to respond to that. Uh, first off, a little bit of history. Uh, going back a few years, you may recall this, George. You may too. We approached them when Jan Seaton was the attorney. Uh, this is right at the in inception of MiamiSprings.com, and a lot of this was going on, and it was basically a graffiti site, not, no more, no less. And there was a lot of the disparaging comments that you're referring to that were on there then. And we made an effort. I think we even made a, made, a, made a legal effort to try and get that get him to change his website. And William, did he get a? I don't know. Were you here when he, when this happened? I don't know if he got a lawyer or something. We, anyway, it all fizzled away, and nothing ever came of it. But uh, I had occasion on Saturday to, to speak to Nestor Suarez uh, out at that event on Saturday, and we talked about this very matter that you brought that you. Put on the agenda for tonight and him and i had about a 20 minute conversation about it and he's aware that he's not happy with a lot of stuff that goes on there but he his hands are tied in terms of what he can do about it i don't know if that's true but i suggested that he that he you know at least he agrees that a, a lot of stuff on there is is, is is material that he would not like to see on there being the owner of the website uh, i might i might also add that um Maybe further discussions with Nestor uh, would, 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 would do some good at this point. Um, uh, in addition, there's another website, which is worse than his, which is now out here. And you talk about some material. I'm telling you, it, make, it makes his like a Bobsy Twins novel. Yeah, but, but the reason I bring this up is because it has the city's name on it. I know. I know. I know exactly why you're bringing it up. So, so and, you know, and, and these, I guess. And, and I these, guess type of, these, type of, these type of statements have no business in, in, in dissing good people. You're right. And okay, the city that's, certainly that's, this should not be associated with it. I would like to, to remind everyone that if there's something particularly say on Facebook or Twitter that is offensive, uh, you have you can contact the administrators, the Facebook administrator and report it. And yes, that's true. important it, it, because, because the reports, they monitor the number of reports that they get on a certain post and that's what they respond to. So it's important not just to say, oh, well, they're not gonna do anything. No, if they get, um, you know, more than one, obviously, um, report of offensive pull. that's what draws their attention and they will remove it for the most part. I mean, yeah. we have to allow but, free speech, unfortunately, but, um, and free speech doesn't always, you know, isn't always the most pleasant uh, but, speech. But, but, you know, you've had that, you had that, you know, I go in this respect, there's still a possibility you could remove some of this stuff. If Facebook and these other people can, there's a possibility that it could be monitored or removed. But the, what my point being is, we had your your uh, we had the bullying situation. We had the seminar about bullying, and quite frankly, a lot of this stuff that's said on that site is is bullying people. And you know, I don't know what the legalities are. Free speech is one thing, but they are bullying making. It's sort of like when you watch television when kids are in high school and the kids get bullied by their friends on the, on the internet, and it causes problems. And, and 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 I know we all are uh, accept what we get because we're representatives of the city, but some of these people are are people that work in our city, and that are good people, and have business in our city, and for some unknown reason, they get attacked. And once it gets started. It snowballs, and next thing you know, they're talking about these people uh, like as if they're uh, they they came from wherever. And it and I know that I've talked to some of these people, and you know, it's like anything else. They say, well, it just rolls off my back; it goes forward. But that doesn't do it. I mean, I've been sitting in this seat all the time. You know, you can get criticized or lied upon, lied about. You can say, yeah, it rolls off your back, but when you go home, it bothers you. I don't care who you are; it does. Because if it doesn't, it's not human. So. 
I had to bring this up because there were, I had quite a few calls. I don't, I don't get as many calls as Councilwoman Mitchell does, but I got quite a many calls this time about this situation. And so I had to bring it up for public uh, and maybe somehow touch. I didn't want to even bring up his name, but since Bobby brought his name up, maybe Nestor might consider in some way to monitor or see some things that are, frankly, I think are unacceptable to be put in public, but that's his decision. But our, our, our whole time, our whole responsibility is the city of Miami Springs websites, the gov and so on. And that's what we oversee. And I tell the people out there that might be listening to this or maybe are that they got to understand that Miami Springs.com is nothing to do with city information except for what he puts on from the city. And that's it. I thank you for your time. I would like to, to add something. Um, it is a public website. And as such, uh, Nestor can, can moderate it as he sees fit. Um, I would like to know if, uh, I would like to ask consensus, if we can at least, uh, if we can at least approach him, have the city approach him and ask him to at least put, put some kind of a disclaimer on his front page or somewhere that states that that's not the official Miami Springs web. I think we well, tried I, that I, before, George. We tried well, that, George, for But, for but, it, but again, uh, to, to, to get him back to re-engage him right now, being we're talking about it, 0% uh, of zero is zero. zero. You don't I, try to I, do it. I, I think we should at least done. ask if, 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 if he feels if he feels that there's things on that website that shouldn't that 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 aren't aren't right, I, he I does. think we should at least help the city out by putting some kind of a disclaimer. I mean, we're not asking for a lot, you know. Right, right. Well, I, I don't see why the manager can't try to talk to him again. That, that, you you know, like they always say, you can only ask and the only answer exactly. You, you and, only and can mayor, ask. Mayor, I'd like to bring you up. You never too. know what you might get. Let, let, let's forget. Let's not forget the name of the, uh, that other website that just sh showed up here about a year ago, six months, whatever it was. That that's worse. I don't know what it's called. I don't even know nothing about it. Backdoor, backyard, or my my yard, or something like that. It's, and oh, it's just that doesn't. Door. Yeah, that doesn't have our name on it though. Okay, so I appreciate your time. Mayor, I just wanted to say one thing on all these sites because we're naming a lot of specific sites, and another site could pop up tomorrow, and five more sites could pop up tomorrow. So you know. But just specific sites I'm, I'm not sure is a great idea but um what's really important is to keep in mind is that that a lot of these sites do um post information about the community that is good it's like everything with social media and with technology it offers us the best opportunities and the worst opportunities of humanity so um that's not and, you know and, and you and you are right but the thing, the thing about this, but the thing about this website is it has the city name, unlike all the others. I agree. And I agree. those people that people that that look into our community to maybe possibly move here can miss through that website easily as being a city website. And although, although Nestor has some a lot of positive stuff on that website, that form is a very negative uh, portion of it. I agree, Councilman. What I'm saying is that whatever strategy we decide to take, um, we got to keep in mind that tomorrow another website could open with Miami Springs. You know, well, whatever. Uh, we'll see. So we'll see. We here's to, what um, here's what happens. Here. I never. Here's what happens. You guys went off of the wrong. You, you guys go off of the situation I brought up. My only situation to bring up tonight was MiamiSprings.co. Bobby brings up another website. I'm not talking about other websites. I'm stating that this website has our name on it, as George accepts my position, that it has our name on it. I'm not going to talk about other websites. I don't know nothing about them, and I, I can't do anything about that. But I can somehow make the city know, citizens know that MiamiSprings.com is not part of Miami Springs. That's all I'm talking about. I'm not discussing other websites, Councilwoman Mitchell. I, I understand. You're absolutely right. But I, don't want to, I want to talk about this. That's it. And that's Mayor, the only one but that I, my point right is over. that there, there are at least three other websites with Miami Springs. I, okay. Right. I, Miami I, Springs I, on them. So I think, I, no, wait a minute. I, I think, I think this is, this approach is a, a website. Be able to discuss ask, it. No, why, do, I, why don't you want to talk about it? What all I'm saying is that if we approach a website and ask them to as kindly ask them as a favor, ask them for 
um, to clarify that they are not an official website, which I think we should, whether they decide to do it or not. I think it's a totally reasonable thing for us to do and to pursue, but that uh, there's several websites with our name on them if you go online and they, um, you know. Well, that's understood. I, I, agree. I agree with you, Councilwoman. But again, none of those, none of those have a forum where people are anonymous and their names aren't put towards their towards their posts all all those all those other ones that you mentioned you're right there are there there are some others but none of them have a have a forum where where it allows anonymous posts put up every other every other site has your name on it whether that's your true name or not that's a different story uh, the one with the, the, the Miami Springs.com. If anybody that doesn't know anything about Miami Springs, if you just Google Miami Springs, he's going to be the first site that comes up. Yeah. That's that's the other problem with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. We, we go on to which, city a, which, is, which, which I agree with you, Mayor. That's a concern. Uh, city, city Attorney, anything from you? No, Mayor. Okay. City Management? No, oh, Mayor. Uh, Tammy, do you have any uh, event? No? No. Uh, anything from council? Good night, and may Good the night. be yours. <laughs> <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>